Hi. Uh, I'm just checking if every, everyone can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, so this is the presentation on the Python interface to Helix. Uh, just before this presentation, Phil presented on setting up Fedrits. If I mention the previous presentation or Phil's presentation, that's what I'm referring to for the people that are watching the video recording later. So, um, so the Python interface um, uses the C shared library uh, in Helix and, and builds a Python uh, wrapper around that. Uh, there, if, if someone wants to interface with Helix from any language, they, uh, the recommended way is to use the C shared library. Uh, the documentation page describes how to uh, build the Python interface. If there are questions, people can contact us on our on our GitHub channel or post on the GitHub page. Uh, basically, if you build from source, all you need to do is link the Python uh, runtime library and follow the instructions. And when you build from source, it will build the Python extension as well. So we're using Swig to generate the C file that interfaces between the C shared library and uh, the language of choice, in this case, Python. So in this case, Swig generates uh, this helix underscore wrap dot C file. Uh, one example of this uh, I have open over here. I have, I have open over here the helix underscore wrap dot C file. And in the C shared library, there is a function called helix get version. This is the auto-generated uh, C function that wraps around the helix get version function when a Python object is passed into it. The swig also allows us to generate bindings for other languages. We have uh, uh, the, a MATLAB and Java binding to helix as well, uh, and these have been tested. So in this presentation, I thought I'd go through a simple example of uh, a, a Python federation with just two federates. And the two federates that I'm going to be using are a pi receiver and a pi sender. So as Phil mentioned in his presentation, uh, you uh, to create a federation, you would need a broker and two individual federates. So in this case, the C interface creates the broker. And uh, so on the left side, we have the pi sender.py file. And on the right side, we have the pi receiver.py file. And the, the broker is created on the sender side. And we also create an, a federate info object and pass the federate info object to a uh, create value, fun uh, value federate function, which creates the value federate. Using the reference to the value federate, you can register publications and enter the execution mode. And once you once all federates have entered the execution mode, you can start a code simulation. In in this case, all we're doing is publishing a double value. In this case, the value of pi, and requesting time at each time step. So that's what the pi sender is doing. Uh, and once it once it's completed doing that for five time steps, it calls the finalize function and then frees itself. The receiver, again, sets up a federate info, registers a subscription, enters the execution mode, and requests, uh, requests time indefinitely. And once it's completed again, it uh, so in, in this while loop, it prints out the value that it is that it received from the sender. And then once it's completed, it finalizes and then frees the federate and closes the library. So I'm just going to run the example to show what this would look like. So you can see that the pi sender is sending the value, and the pi receiver is receiving and printing it out. One advantage of the Python interface is that you can interactively 
work with Helix. So in this case, I'm going to import the Helix library and then get the version string, for example. I'm using 1.0.0 alpha 2. You can also see all the other functions that are available in the Python, li uh, in the Python library. So this might help with debugging or prototyping, prototyping of federation before you build it in uh, C or C++. So that's a quick and short tour of the Python interface. Do people have any questions? Deepak, maybe you could talk a little bit about um, what folks might be using the Python interface for and what tools uh, that we have are already incorporating it. Yeah, sure. So uh, if, if you have a Python application uh, that performs a, uh, a, a specific function and you want to co-simulate it with any other ap application that perhaps is not even in Python, you can use the Helix Python interface to do that. Uh, we are currently using the, uh, the Python interface in Festive Lite, which performs the market simulation. So it sends the LMPs to uh, GridLabD in, in this case. So any application in Python would work. This supports Python 2.7 and 3, 3. Uh, any version of 3. Uh, similarly, you can also use the MATLAB interface and integrate it with Python. So th there is an effort to add a PyPower uh, in Helix interface, which is the equivalent of MatPower in Python. So one could do MatPower with this the same interface using Helix and integrate it with any of their core simulations. Are there any other questions? You've made something that can install it on Max through Brew, correct? That is correct. So the idea is to have a one-click installer eventually. Right now on, a, on the Mac, you can just Brew install Helix. You can also Brew install Helix with Python and pass in the Python version that you want to use, the, the header files for that Python version, and it will build the Python extension. By default, if you don't pass in, I, I think if you don't pass in any include files, it will build uh, the Helix package with the, the Python that comes with Brew. Uh, I'm currently using Anaconda uh, or Miniconda and I generally recommend using Anaconda or Miniconda because it makes installing other C applications or other applications that are built in Python that interface with C much easier. So, so yes, there is a, a one-line installation for Helix on a Mac that installs the Python extension as well. And on Windows, this, the steps aren't uh, too difficult. Again, there's just two lines that you have to use. Uh, you just have to make sure that you link to the right version of Boost and pass in all the necessary command line arguments. Uh, most, of the, most of the information over there is on the documentation page. And again, Ubuntu is also similar. There's just this one line that sets up everything and then the make and make install, build and install it. Excellent. Are there any uh, final questions for Deepak? Thank you, everyone, for attending. I'm going to stop the recording now.